Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna go and do our commodity, daily commodity update. Uh, we're gonna work our way through the dollar, yields, precious metals, and commodities and ETFs that I follow. Uh, obviously I'm gonna be giving my financial opinions around all this. And if you guys like these opinions, if you guys like this type of analysis, uh, you can get more analysis on individual companies at finding-value.com. Uh, for the Platinum member, you can use the word discount in the coupon code. So let's take a look and jump into the DXY. So if we take a long-term big picture view of the DXY, we're coming back to support levels here. That's that white line, horizontal line going across. Uh, it's not just the line, it's the general vicinity of that area or of where that line is. So we're coming back and you can obviously tell we're getting some support where that line is. Uh, that's where we've had multiple transactions in history uh, before, and a lot of the times price goes back to levels where people accumulate again. So we're getting a move up in the DXY uh, up about a half a percent today. It's a pretty good move. We've got the 10-year yield that's also strengthening. It's up 2%. And it's it's moving quite good here. We've got the support line here. We've bounced off of it, and we're starting to move higher. This does have ramifications of how uh, things are priced. And you can see we've got the downtrend line and we're basically right on that support area. This is logarithmic, I usually do it on logarithmic, but we're right at that support area for logarithmic uh, price move and we are bouncing higher. Um, could we have a nice big move to the upside? We could, maybe people are dumping bonds. They don't want exposure to uh, our bond markets. Uh, TYX is also moving higher. Uh, there's a support level there, and we also have a longer-term support level. Uh, there it is there on the long term. And we're starting to move higher, and I wouldn't have guessed this. I really wouldn't have. I thought we were going to roll over. I thought fear was going to grip the markets and, and have us roll over, and it still can do that. But um, this is looking pretty strong to the upside, and yields continue to move on higher. Uh, the bond prices, bond prices are moving lower. They move inverse to yields. Uh, so they're moving back. Uh, and again, I don't think this is, is it could, it may not be a uh, short term move. Maybe there is more fear in the markets where this could drive higher. Uh, but long term, uh, this does look, look pretty, pretty bad. Uh, this is basically an end of trend type move where we're going to head lower. That's that head and shoulders type move. We've broken the support of this uh, uptrend line, ripped right through it downward. And I do think this will eventually work its way lower. Short term, though, could we come back up and re do a retest before heading before heading back down? We definitely could. We definitely could. Um, the TYX TNX ratio. This is kind of looking at things inverting, uninverting. Uh, we've broken the downtrend line. We have moved higher here, and we're just kind of consolidating in some sort of you know pennant formation. We're gonna have to see which way this thing breaks. Um, again, we can we can stay down here for a little while. Uh, that's not my, um, not my concern, but we've broken the downtrend. It may bounce sideways for a little while, uh, before heading higher the two year, uh, we are seeing that strength in the two year and we could go higher in the two year before heading lower. Um, the reason I think we're going to head lower is I just feel like there's some crap that needs to get extinguished from the system with higher interest rates. People will get scared when that stuff gets extinguished from the system debt bad companies, whatever it is, with higher uh, interest rates. And we're just going to get a flush out of the system. So I do think that we're going to come up, maybe we come back down after summer or something like that, uh, and we flush out the system. That doesn't mean that this is going to break this trend line and go back down. I think we're going to come like that and then go back up higher uh, over time. Uh, and that we can also see that in the, the two-year, 10-year yield as well. We've come on up, we've basically broken to the downside, and I do think we'll head a little bit lower and do a retest of this breakout or come back down uh, into this pattern over time for, for the yield curve. The CRB index um, still rolling higher. It's looking actually uh, excellent for a move to the upside. So um, it's moving, it's, it's working really well here to the upside and it, it's actually looking quite strong. Uh, the CRB to S&P 500, commodities are outperforming stocks. Uh, today, uh, it looks like we're trying to put in some base and perhaps we can start to move back up. 
Uh, gold, again, we had a higher dollar, higher yields, and those yields inverted. Gold doesn't necessarily like that, but guess what? Gold is actually holding quite strong given the market conditions that we had with the stronger dollar and the stronger yields and the inversion of that curve. So gold is actually behaving quite well given the market conditions today. Silver down a little bit, but it's, it's definitely not out. We're getting a little bit of selling pressure here. Um, we've had a monster run from this bottom here. So we're getting that kind of healthy pullback, I think, before uh, a next leg higher. Platinum uh, remaining resilient today up five bucks, just moving sideways with the little bloody nose. We'll see if we can get some momentum uh, and move on higher or if the sellers are going to come in and push it down uh, to the downside here. But big picture view, I am hugely bullish uh, on this moving higher. So. Whatever happens in the short term, uh, if it decides to give me better buying, you know, better prices, I will buy it. Uh, I think this chart looks absolutely fantastic for a move on up. Uh, XAU to gold ratio. This ratio um, hasn't broken that line for happiness yet. I know some people are waiting for this to break so we can really pile into it to uh, to go long on the gold and silver mining companies. Uh, today we were slightly lower, uh, but still we've had a massive move here. You might get a little bit of a pullback before I head on higher. Uh, GDX down 2.25%. That's basically what we were just looking at. And we're in this flag pattern ready to break. Gold's already broken out. Uh, GDX, this, the gold and silver mining companies, generally lag behind it. Uh, but still looks all right. SilJ also looking fine, down 2.3%. We're in this zone uh, of a lot of resistance and support that we are in. So we're going to bounce around here a lot. Uh, get used to it. And we're also breaking out of this smaller area break to the upside. So that looks good there. We've got crude oil, uh, crude oil down 1.85%. Uh, is this going to do a retest back here? It very well could. I do think we could see some short-term uh, downside to it. We've got natural gas uh, heading higher today, up 8.23%. And we could see this start to put in a bottom. I know that we've got weather. This is highly driven by weather. And we could see a higher uh, move in natural gas due to the weather. Uh, colder, colder weather is projected. Uh, XOP, yeah, you know me. Um, I'm, I'm a little afraid that we could get a pullback here down to this $100 zone. Why do I think that? Well, we've got an inverted head and shoulders here. There's the shoulder head, shoulder that's going to be created. Uh, we also have a pattern here. If we look at the short term, a support or trend line, and we've broken that trend line. And it looks like to me that we could head a little bit lower here in the short term. Again, I don't play these market movements in the short term, uh, but if we do get down there, I will definitely add to the positions. Uh, OIH also has that type of movement. Uh, lots of selling pressure, big down candlesticks. This, to me, looks like we could potentially head lower uh, if it decides to uh, get some selling pressure here because uh, we do have that momentum. Sprout Physical Uranium Trust. Moving on to Sprout Physical Uranium Trust, you can see that we still have some selling pressure in here. This isn't a strong-looking chart yet. Um, so if you, what I look at is I look at the size of the selling candy, candlesticks. I then look at the size of the buying candlesticks, and I look at these relationships. And right now, we still have sellers in this where they're very easily persuaded to sell. Generally, you don't see that if you want to be moving to the upside. I mean, it still can. It's just usually when I see this, you get a bunch of buying pressure. You get the big green candlesticks and smaller selling pressure like this, and then you just keep working higher. But we're getting larger and larger selling pressure, which means we could head lower in the short term. Uh, for the physical, your Sprout Physical Uranium Trust. Uh, we're also seeing that with other energy sectors. Euronm down a little bit today. There we are today. Uh, this is in a battle here. But again, just looking at how this thing fell, lots of selling pressure, and we don't have the big buying pressure. That also correlates with lower yields. The two-year yield going down, the uninversion of the, of the curves, all of these things. So uh, again, I think there is risk for downside movements in all of these sectors at this time. 
Uh, Tan moving higher today. We'll see if this thing breaks out. It's right there trying to break out, and we could see a move up in solar. Uh, nice little pattern here with this double bottom, the breakout, and the consolidation. So this does look like it could potentially head higher. Uh, COPX, copper, down a little bit today. Um, it's not really a small down day. This looks really good for a continuation higher. Uh, so what, what we see here uh, from this bottom is lots of buying pressure. And the red candlesticks are all very small and muted. Uh, it's that stair-stepping pattern that I look for uh, in these candlesticks. And you can see before that, that these were a little bit larger in the pullback consolidation area. Uh, lithium, uh, it's still looking fantastic here uh, today, right? Coming through right at support or resistance, I should say. Uh, we'll see if this continues higher. Looking good. Uh, REMX also right at that resistance line, and we'll see if we can punch through or not. The S&P 500 up 0.33%. You know, this still looks good. It does not look bad, and it's starting to peek through these uh, this nice little area up here. It's starting to punch through this, uh, and you could say this is an inverted shoulder, head, shoulder, and it's starting to break to the upside. Uh, so that actually looks quite strong. Uh, the NASDAQ also looking like it could maybe try to punch higher here. We'll see if it breaks uh, to the upside. I'm talking about this basically resistance line going across this way. That's what I'm looking at uh, going across, and maybe we can punch through it. We'll find out tomorrow uh, or the day after. Uh, emerging markets just moving sideways. We've broken this to the upside, higher, low, and if we break here, we're in a new uptrend. Uh, XHB actually looking quite strong here. We've got uh, this double bottom, the pattern here. We've broken it, did a retest, and now we're starting to move higher. Uh, we could see home builders move on up here. Um, if we get a good, uh, which we're probably going to get a good reading on housing starts. People are leaking their money into the home builders before the housing starts number come up. But uh, that looks that looks pretty good there for a move on up. Move, moving on up. Again, we are below this resistance line. Are we going to come here, tag it, and then roll back over? We'll find out uh, with time. Copper moving back down. We're probably going to do a little retest maybe before heading higher. We've got support underneath us. Uh, I, to me, this still looks really good for a big old launch higher, like, like a entire move of, of another level higher. So maybe we go to eight or $10 or something or, or $7 or, or something like that um, when this thing breaks to the upside and uses this as the launch pad to do it. Lumber moving on up. Uh, that is also a sign perhaps uh, of housing starts. And I think the housing starts numbers will be released at some point. Maybe they already did release. I'll have to look. We've got um, iron ore just moving sideways. I still think this looks bullish from this perspective. We'll eventually work our way on higher. Nickel from a long-term perspective, still doing fine. Uh, we broke out to the upside and we're just consolidating here. Uh, aluminum moving sideways, slightly lower. Again, we're just bouncing back and forth in aluminum. I do think aluminum is going to squeeze up uh, definitely 2024, maybe late 2023. Baltic Dry Index. Um, just moving a little bit sideways here this past few weeks, but still looks good to move higher. I think that looks really good. Newcastle Coal down 1.44%, just moving sideways here. Um, again, it's trying to find a bottom. And then Ethereum a little bit lower, but this is just a continuation pattern most likely to the upside, just a small down day. Uh, and Bitcoin. And, and again, guys, even if we were to pull back, we'll have to see what the pattern makes. We're, we're too early to make any sort of determination on what this this is an inverted head and shoulders it'll work its way higher over time but um yeah you know, that's what we've got for today guys and you know I'm, I'm still cautious in the short term for you know oil um natural gas companies oil and natural gas companies i'm waiting to see if this thing's going to dive a little bit uh, i still think that you know we're coming up into summer summer's a strong point or strong time of the year seasonality wise and uh, generally, that's when inventories draw down. Can we see inventories draw down and the oil and gas companies kind of pull back? It's possible. Uh, it is possible. But uh, I'm still heavily bullish uh, on gold and silver, even though the companies were down today. 
still heavily bullish on it. I think that the, the thing that makes me really bullish on it are yields, the way that yields are moving, not short term though. Short term yields are going in the opposite direction. They're moving on up. But the way that they punched through on the downside on the two year yield, yeah, we're going to come back up. Maybe we'll create another shoulder. Maybe it takes a couple of months. Um, and maybe gold and silver kind of move sideways. Maybe they anticipate the move. Tough to say. Uh, but that's where I'm looking. Uh, and, and the charts look really good in that sector. Uh, so gold, silver, platinum, the precious metals. Uh, those are the sectors I'm really looking at. But uh, that's what I've got for today, guys. If you guys like the content, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And check out the website. Definitely subscribe there. We have a platinum question and answer session coming up at 5 p.m. on Sunday. If you want to join and ask questions, uh, join our community. Love to have you with us. Catch you later, guys. This is Finding Value.